وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله معز من أطاعه واتقاه ومذل من أضاع عمره وعصاه أحمده تعالى على جزيل كرمه وما أولاه وأشكره على آلائه وما أزداه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له لا رب سواه ما خاب من دعاه ولا يئس من رجاه وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله خير عبد اصطفاه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن كان هواه تبعا لهداه أما بعد إخواني في الله إني أحبكم في الله My beloved brothers and sisters I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala My beloved brothers and sisters تنبهوا وانتبهوا Wake up and be alert وحذروا وحذروا Be cautious and warn others. وتذكروا وذكروا Remember and remind others. وعلموا وعلموا Know and teach and educate others. أن المعاصي والذنوب خطر على الأبدان والقلوب Sins, my beloved brothers and sisters, are a danger to our bodies and our hearts. The effects that it has on our land, the effect that it has on our society. Wallahi, sins, my beloved brothers and sisters, it is sababu li sakhati alami al-ghuyub. It is the reason and it's a cause for Allah, the one who knows the unseen, to become angry with you. How many harms has sins brought to us? Kam jalabat? How many problems? has come from min masaib wahallat biha min mata'ib how many calamities how many problems and hardship has come from sins my beloved brothers and sisters how many blessings has been removed from us and how many distress and regret came because of sins that we did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in the Qur'an, he says, مَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا يُجْزَبِهِ Anyone who does evil will be rewarded in accordance to the evil that they did. وَلَا يَجِدْ لَهُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَلِيًّا وَلَا نَصِيرًا And that person will not find anyone give them victory. They will not find an ally and someone to support them. فَالْعِزُّ Honor my beloved brothers and sisters. فَالْعِزَّةُ كُلُّ الْعِزَّةِ Honor and all forms of honor is in what? فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ Obeying Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. وَالذِّلَّةُ كُلُّ الذِّلَّةِ Humiliation and all forms of humiliation is فِي مَعْصِيَةِ اللَّهِ Disobeying Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Fatir, Allah says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةَ فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا If you're looking for and you're seeking to attain honor, then honor is in Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحَادُّونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَٰئِكَ فِي الْأَذَلِّينَ The people who oppose Allah and oppose the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and disobey him, by doing sins, by committing atrocities, by committing crimes. أُولَٰئِكَ فِي الْأَذَلِّينَ Those are the humiliated ones. So you, you choose. Are you looking for honor? مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةَ فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا Are you looking for honor? Are you looking for respect? Then respect and honor will come to you when you do what? في طاعة الله when you obey Allah تبارك وتعالى والذلة كل الذلة humiliation and all full of full forms of humiliation is في معصية الله disobeying Allah تبارك وتعالى 
ان الذين يحادون الله ورسوله اولئك في الاذلين you find many youngsters today youths when you go up to them and you ask them why are you on the streets why are you selling drugs for why are you carrying these weapons he says i need to earn respect and honor he's doing it for respect he's doing it for honor yes there are other reasons why he's doing it but from the reasons why he's doing it is that he wants to get respect in his neighborhood he wants to get respect in his ends as he puts it oh youth oh youngster you have a long life ahead of you there is a long life ahead of you if you're looking for honor if you're looking for respect then honor the one who created you honor the one who brought you into existence honor the one who provides for you and sustains you if you honor him allah will bring for you honor fali man kana yuridu al-'izzata falillahi al-'izzatu jami'a honor is all for allah it is allah tabarak wa ta'ala the honorable one and allah will give you honor allah tabarak wa ta'ala will take care of you by disobeying allah by selling drugs by disobeying allah in killing other people because they came into your neighborhood is because they came into your turf or your ends as you put it then remember inna alladhina yuhaddun allah wa rasuluh those who go against allah and his messenger ulaika fil adhallin you're going to be humiliated in this world what you're looking for you're not going to get it what are you running after you're running after the dunya you're running after money you're running after women allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says man kana yurid al ajila ta'ajjalna lahu fiha ma nasha'u liman nurid thumma ja'alna lahu jahannama yaslaha madmuma madhura wa man arada al akhirata wa sa'a laha sa'yaha wa huwa mu'min fa ulaika kana sa'yuhum mashkura the one who's running after this dunya you're on the streets because you want you want to make money haram income you're running around and you're doing all of this so you can get a woman you're doing all of this for worldly reasons whatever all, whatever it is but it's worldly reasons right man kana yuridu al-'ajila anyone who's running after this short world allah says man kana yuridu al-'ajila ta'ajjalna lahu fiha ma nasha'u liman nurid you're not going to get what you're looking for unless allah wants it wants you to have it so you're running around trying to become that one yani individual who made it from the streets and became a millionaire or etc who never got in prison you're looking at that one person but you're forgetting the thousands and thousands of people who died before the age of 30 the thousands who got into prison and are spending the rest of their life in prison you're forgetting all of that you're just looking at that one person at the top or that person that you know that made it out if you speak to many of these youth 90% of those that i've spoken to they will say to you i'm smart trust me i won't get caught i know what i'm doing that's what they all say brothers and sisters you think the one who is in prison now you think the one that was killed and murdered he didn't think the same they all think the same so you're running after man kana yuridu al-'izzata falillahi al-'izzatu jami'a ana is what you're looking for allah will give it to you if you run after this dunya only what allah sanctioned and prepared for you is what you're going to take from it wa man arada al-akhirah but the one who wants the hereafter wa man arada al-akhirah wa sa'a laha sa'yaha wa huwa mu'min the one who strives for the hereafter he strives for the yawm al-qiyamah and then he doesn't just strive but he comes with it in a state of iman wa huwa mu'min fa ulaika kana sa'yuhum mashkura your effort is worth it al hasan al basri rahimahullah he was talking about the sinners may allah forgive us for our sins hasan al basri is talking to my likes and people like me the usat he said wa in taqtaqat bihim al bighal wa hamlajat bihim al baradin fa inna dhull al ma'siyata la tufariqu qulubahum 
Aballahu illa an yudilla man asa. He mentions rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'a. Humiliation will not depart from their faces and their hearts. The people who commit sins. Inna alladheena yuhaddoon Allah wa rasoolah. Ulaika fil adalleen. Fa inna dhulla al-ma'asiyah. La tufariq qulubahum. Some of the wordings is. La tufariq wujuhahum. Aballahu illa an yudilla man asa. The humiliation will never depart from their faces. They will be humiliated as long as they live in this world and they are committing sins and crimes. Going against Allah and His Messenger. Allah refused. The creator of the heavens and the earth, He refused subhanahu wa ta'ala except to humiliate the ones who commit sins. Allah chose that subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, the smart one, al kayis the smart individual, the aqil, the youth, who's really smart, is not the one who knows how to make money on the streets, as many of our youngsters think, and how to avoid, huh? how to avoid the police and get away from them and make sure that I sell and I can make money and I, I, I know my ways and my, my, my methods. That's not the smart one. The smart one really is the one who what? The one who pleases his Lord before he meets him. Number one, before he meets Allah, before he stands in front of Allah, wa ta'ala, he pleases his Lord. The second thing that he does is he exerts effort in making sure that he beautifies his grave before he enters it. That's your final home. That's where you're going to stay. So you exert every effort to make sure that you work towards beautifying that grave with righteous deeds. The third thing is, And you pray before you're prayed on. The person who does those three. You please your Lord Allah before you meet him subhanahu wa ta'ala. You beautify your grave with righteous deeds by adhering to Allah wa ta'ala and his messenger. By following the instruction and what they tell you to do. And you pray before you're prayed on. That is the smart slave. That is the smart youth. That is a smart sister who does that. If you go against Allah and you go against the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will be depressed in this world. You will feel yani, distress, agony, pain. It won't stop. You will be humiliated in this world. No one will respect you. فَإِنَّ ذُلَّ الْمَعْصِيَةَ لَا تُفَارِقُ وُجُوهَهُمْ Wallahi, the sins will not depart. Yani the humiliation will not go away from your face. أَبَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا أَنْ يُدِلَّ مَنْ عَصَاهُ Allah chose subhanahu wa ta'ala except to humiliate the one who sins, who commits crimes. Allah chose that subhanahu wa ta'ala. The outcome is not pleasant. Brothers and sisters, are you going to disobey Allah? Let's look at the one who commits zina, who goes and meets up a woman, goes in a dark room with her, Commit zina with her. How long are you going to enjoy yourself? Two hours? One hour? Three hours? After that, what waits for you? What is the punishment that awaits you? It's not going to be one or two hours, brothers, the sin that it's gonna, you're going to face. It's longer and it's more painful. If you don't get punished in this dunya, what awaits you in the hereafter is very severe, brothers and sisters. So don't do a small sin that the consequences for it is very severe. وَلِذَلِكَ From the evil effects of sins is what? قِلَّةُ التَّوْفِيقِ Allah strips from you the ability. وَفَسَادُ الرَّأِي Allah ta'ala corrupts your opinions and your thought process. It gets corrupted. People who commit sins, who are committing major, major sins, who are consistent upon minor sins, what happens to them? The following. قِلَّةُ التَّوْفِيقِ Allah takes the ability away from them. Everything they do, it just doesn't make, it doesn't happen. They can't make ends meet. Life is hard for them. وَفَسَادُ الرَّأِي Their opinions just does not make sense. They can't bring sharp, strong, rooted ideas. They can't. وَخَفَاءُ الْحَقِّ The truth is hidden from them. They just can never get hold of the truth. وَفَسَادُ الْقَلْبِ Their hearts become tainted. وَخُمُورُ الذِّكْرِ وَإِضَاعَةُ الْوَقْتِ the person 
يعني the remembrance and the time and all of it gets destroyed. ونفرت الخلق the people don't want to be with you. They're running away from you. They're telling you, no one wants to be in your presence. والوحشة بين العبد وبين ربه you start feeling loneliness and then a gap is then created between you and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala وَمَنْعُ إِجَابَةِ الدُّعَاءِ your dua is not accepted you raise your hands you cry you say oh Allah I am suffering you're not going to be obeyed your, your request is not going to be accepted you, you will not be granted what you're looking for وَقَسْوَةُ الْقَلْبِ your heart becomes tainted ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَ كَالْحِجَارَةِ أَوْ أَشَدُ قَسْوَةِ In another place Allah says أَلَمْ يَأْنِنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Your heart becomes tainted and once your heart becomes tainted brothers and sisters do you know what type of feeling you're going to have it's not pleasant when qaswatul qalb happens to you your heart dehydrates the same way that the body dehydrates, if it doesn't get water, the heart when it gets dehydrated and it doesn't get the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah, the effect that it has on you is severe, more severe than a person who's dying from thirst. وَمَحْوُ barakati, The barakah is stripped. فِي الرِّزْقِ وَالْعُمْرِ Allah is going to strip from you the barakah in your provision. You work all day, you're driving, you're a taxi driver. You start work at six or seven o'clock in the morning and you go home at nine o'clock. You bring wealth to your family. Two, three days, the bar- there's no nothing. Allah takes the barakah from your rizq. Your life, you look, you sit down one day and you say, I've lived in this world for this many years. What have I done? Barakah has been taken from it. Another person who's only lived for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years has achieved far greater than you've achieved for your 30, 40, 50 years. وَحِرْمَانُ ilm, You're prevented from knowledge. You go to the circle, you can't seek knowledge. You go to that book, you open it, you can't read it for an hour or two. The reason all of this is sins, ma'as is in the way. yas, The person gives up. وَلِبَاسُ dhulli, Also, you're going, to be a, you're going to be dressed with clothing of humility. Wherever you go, you're just humiliated. You're humiliated by insignificant people. You're, and, uh, you're at work, Chris and Michael and Steve or Samantha and Judy are humiliating you at work. You're a Muslim, Amina, Aisha, Zahra, Fatima. You're being humiliated at work. You're going to be uh, يعني, dressed with clothes of humiliation. Libas al here. It means, brothers and sisters, the way that the clothes does not leave your body, humility will not leave you. It will stick to you. Your enemy is going to humiliate you. And the tightness of your chest. You're going to be tested with close people who are evil. Those وَيُضَيِّعُونَ الْوَقْتَ You're going to be around people who are going to destroy you. وَطُولُ الْهَمِّ وَالْغَمِّ وَضَنْكُ الْمَعِيشَةِ And you're going to live on one tablet of depression to the other. On one tablet of depression to the other. فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدَى فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ القيامة أعمى. قال رب لما حشرتني أعمى وقد كنت بصيرا قال كذلك أتتك آياتنا فنسيتها وكذلك اليوم تنسى يقول فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن تبع هدايا if you follow that guidance فلا يضل ولا يشقى what does it mean فلا يضل ولا يشقى ابن عباس he said فلا يضل أي في الدنيا ولا يشقى أي في الآخرة you're not going to be misguided in this world and you're not going to be from the people of the hellfire tomorrow when you pass away and you die. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضًا That's the one who took it. The one who took the guidance, who stuck to the guidance, who took the Prophet as a role model, lived by the principles of the Prophet Wasallam. That person will have what? فَلَا يَضِلُّ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَلَا يَشْقَى فِي الْآخَرَةِ That's what you're going to get.
وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ What about the one who turned away? The one who doesn't want to take Allah and his messenger's instruction. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ You're going to have what? طُولُ الْهَمِّ وَالْغَمِّ وَضَنْكُ الْمَعِيشَةً You're going to live on excessive depression. You're going to live in a hard life in this world. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى Allah says, Allah will resurrect you يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And when He resurrects you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's going to resurrect you blind. That's how you're going to be resurrected. Why blind, brothers and sisters? Because the truth came to you. You recognize the truth. يَعْرِفُونَهُمْ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ You recognize the truth the way that you recognize your own children. And so guess what, brothers and sisters? You chose to blind yourself from the truth. You chose to ignore the truth. You chose to dismiss the truth. So Yawm Al-Qiyamah, there's no other way you should be, should be dealt with except to be made blind. So you're going to come out blind. You can't see. And then the person will say, قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Oh Allah, why am I blind? When I used to see in the dunya, I used to have eyes. Why am I blind now? The response that will be given to them is what? Did the truth not come to you? Did the haq not reach you? Did you not recognize the truth? Then did you not then consciously choose to ignore it and dismiss it? قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَ حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى The truth came to you. You recognized it. You knew it. The proof was established on you. And you chose to not follow it. For whatever reason, you chose to not follow it. You ignored it. You sh showed arrogance. But you recognized it. وَجَحَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَيْقَنَتْهَا أَنفُسُمْ ظُلْمًا وَعُلُوًا فَانْظُرْ كَيْفَ كَانَ عَقِيبَةُ الظَّالِمِينَ The truth came to you. You recognized it. You knew it. And you chose to not follow it. Like Fir'aun did. He recognized the truth. He understood it. But he chose not to follow it. Musa, when he came to Fir'aun, what did he say to Fir'aun? He said, لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا أَنزَلَ هَؤُلَاءِ إِلَّا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَصَائِرَ وَإِنِّي لَأَظُنُّكَ يَا فِرْعَوْنُ مَثْبُورًا Nabi Allah Musa said to him, You know, Fir'aun, this truth I'm coming with, this message that I've been given, that I've been burdened with, I know and you know it's the truth from Allah. You know Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala gave me this message. You know Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala instructed me to convey it. You know all of this. لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا أَنزَلَ هَؤُلَىٰ إِلَّا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ You know that the Lord of the heavens and the earth is the one who gave me this message. But you are stubborn and you are arrogant and you are hard-headed. You're choosing not to follow the truth. Before that ayah, before that, what did Allah say? Allah says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا Allah says, we have given, we presented, we gave we gave Bani Israel tis'a ayatin. We gave them seven signs. From those signs was, yani Allah gave subhanahu wa ta'ala the sign of the Prophet Nabi Lahim Musa's hand, the stick. Yani wa naza'a yadahu fa'idha hiya bayda'u lil nadhirin yo. Fa'alqa asahu fa'idha hiya thu'banu mubin. Wa naza'a yadahu fa'idha hiya bayda'u lil nadhirin. Yani these were mu'ajizat Allah gave them subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah tabarak wa ta'ala gave ayatun mufassalat. All of that Fir'aun saw it with his two eyes and he chose to not follow it. That's the case with many people, brothers and sisters. If every single verse and every single proof comes to them, they don't want to accept it. And that's those, those people, are they going to live a good life? No. Are they going to live a happy life? No, Wallahi. They're not. They can have the whole entire world placed in front of them. Allah wa Taala is going to put them through hardship. Brothers and sisters, don't idolize these people. Wallahi, from the apparent, they show to you that they are happy. They show you they've got everything. Wallahi, they don't. If you have little in this dunya, Wallahi, if you have little, qasaman liman ahalla al qasam. If you have little in this dunya, you possess very small things in this dunya, but you are strongly connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You, and you are bonded with him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a good relationship with your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qasaman liman ahalla al-qasam. You will live tranquility. Tuma'neena. You will live happiness. Allah promised us. Man amila saliha min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min. Fala nuhiyannahu hayatan tayyibah. Wala najziyannahum ajrahum bi ahsani ma kanu ya'maloon. Allah is going to give you good life. In this world, you're going to live a nice life. 
You might even have little. You're going to have happiness. If Allah gives you the dunya and you, you have a good relationship with Allah, gonna, you're also going to live a good life. The most important thing is that you have a good relationship with Allah. Whether you have a lot in this dunya or not, doesn't matter. Your relationship with Allah has to be strong. This dunya does not mean anything to Allah Taala. Hence why the disbelievers have it. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَوْلَا أَنْ يَكُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبُيُوتِهِمْ سُقُفًا مِنْ فِضَّةً وَمَعَارِجَ عَلَيْهَا يَظْهَرُونَ وَلِبُيُوتِهِمْ أَبْوَابًا وَسُرُرًا عَلَيْهَا يَتَّكِئُونَ وَزُخْرُفًا وَإِنْ كُلُّ ذَلِكَ لَمَّا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ آخرة is for who? للمتقين. آخرة is for the pious people. آخرة is for أهل ال... أهل الخير. أهل الطاعة. لكن الدنيا Allah gives it to what? The disbeliever. Allah gives it to the believer. Allah gives it to the criminal. Allah gives it to the righteous. The dunya is given to everybody. And Allah giving you this dunya has no, it does not indicate. By Allah giving this dunya to you, does not show in any way, shape or form that Allah loves you. It does. You find a Muslim today who's been trying to have children for so long, he hasn't been having, he's not been having it. He's Muslim. But then you see Michael or Chris or Steve, 10 kids, 20 kids. They've been having it. This Muslim has been running around to get money in this dunya. He hasn't got it. You see Steve Rich. He's buying one house after the other. The giving of this dunya is not an indication of righteousness or not. لكن آخرة يوم القيامة is only for the righteous people. And that's what matters. That's what matters. Brothers and sisters, Wallahi, what we're seeing around the world today and the atrocities and the crimes that are happening around the world and the problems that we see are happening, it's what we are doing. It's the sins that we are committing. I, Abdul Rahman, today, because of the sins I'm committing, it's contributing to the problems around the world. That's a reality. I have to accept that. My sins, my يعني, يعني, disobedience of Allah wa is affecting, is having an effect on this dunya. Um, brothers and sisters, ponder here. Allah is not oppressing the Muslims, the ones who are suffering around the world. Allah is not. But there's a Sunnah of Allah Taala that doesn't change. لا تتبدل ولا تتغير. What is that Sunnah? ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم. The corruption has become apparent on this earth and also on the sea. Why? بما كسبت أيدي الناس because of the people's actions. لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ And we're doing a lot of sins, right? We're committing a lot of crimes. We're disobeying Allah. But Allah is not giving us all of the punishment for every sin that we do. He's doing لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا Some of the crimes that we committed. If He did punish us for every crime that we did, Wallahi, brothers and sisters, we will see worse than what we're seeing now. I have to accept here today to every single one of you that I am playing a role in the harm that is being caused to our Muslims around the world. When I sin and I disobey Allah, this is what happens. If I say, no, that's not the case. No, that's not the case. Then I am saying Allah is unjustly oppressing these people. I didn't do anything wrong. Allah is just choosing to punish them. And we can never say that about Allah. Allah it's also you trying to say, I'm perfect. I didn't do anything wrong. You're getting upset when someone says to you, you are committing sins and it's affecting your Muslim brothers around the world. You're saying, no, you don't want to accept that you're committing sins. We're at a time where people don't feel or don't want to accept their own shortcomings and their mistakes. 
Look at the Quran. How many places Allah Taala mentions this concept of your sins, others affected from it. The Sahabas when they looked at themselves, Sahaba to Rasulullah. These are the Sahabas, brothers and sisters. Look what Allah Taala said about them in the Quran. This is the Quran, brothers and sisters. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He said about them, Sahaba. This is noble companions. They said the Sahabas. They said. Mata Nasrullah. When is the victory of Allah going to come for us? Where is the victory? They said, Nabiullah Muhammad is our prophet. He's our leader. He's the one who's governing us and controlling our affairs. We are believers of him. Where did this come to us from? Why are we suffering for? Why are we going through problems? Have we not believed in the Prophet? Are we not his companions? Are we not his followers? Are we not adhering to his path? And why is this happening to us? Look what Allah said to them. How this is happening is because of you guys. If that was said to the Sahabas, who were externally and internally pious, Then what do you think today? When it's me and you. Brothers and sisters, that's what you have to answer. This is from yourselves. The Prophet sallallahu look what he said in the hadith. To show you the evil effects that sins have. And that what we do brings and creates atrocities and crimes on this earth. Allah Ta'ala, he says, Ya ma'ashara al-muhajirina. Muhajirin? Those who migrated. He's talking to the muhajirin. Khamsu khisalin idha b'tulitum bihinna wa'udu billahi an tudrikuna. Five things that if you're tested with, and I seek refuge in Allah Ta'ala, that this is, it happens to you guys, that this takes place on you guys. Lam tadhar al-fahishatu fi qawmin qat. There is not a people who come out openly committing sins and disobeying Allah Taala. حتى يعلن بها إلا فشى فيهم الطاعون والأوجاع التي لم تكن في أسلافهم الذين مضوا. Who go out there and commit crimes and disobey Allah Taala and commit sins openly? What will happen? إلا فشى فيهم الطاعون. Allah will spread amongst them plagues. COVID-19. Sins will start to ha- We do sins, we commit crimes, Allah will bring f- viruses that we've never heard of. Killing people. Al-ta'oon wal-awja' Poverty, Allah will bring it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-lati lam takun fi aslafihim alladhina madaw. These type of illnesses have never been heard of. New illnesses. COVID-19. Does this hadith not show us? 1,400 something years ago the Prophet said it. وَلَمْ يَنْقُصُ الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانَ So the first one is that the people go commit zina. The first hadith was talking about لَمْ تَظْهَرِ الْفَاحِشَةِ فَاحِشَةِ هِيَ مِنْ زِنَا Zina spreads. Brothers and sisters, imagine this today. Bro- committing zina is the norms. If you say, I'm, I'm a virgin. <gasps> wow, really? Are you alright? You couldn't find a partner? Zina is the norms. And being a virgin, it's crazy. Are you, are you fine? Is everything alright? Who stopped you from it? You can't find the right person. People are shocked when a person says, I'm a virgin. Fasha spread Allah. It spread around the world. The asal and the default position right now at this moment is zina. A boy meets a girl. Let's, be, you know, before we get married, let's try things out. Let's try these little things out. Let's, I need to know who I'm getting myself in with. The scale is like, yeah, it's fine. Okay, let's. Four or five years, they're doing zina, zina. And then after that, she's like, oh, he's like, oh, I don't want to get married to you. Inna lillahi wa inna That's the norms. By the way, what I'm saying right now, a group of people are looking at it and saying, isn't that fine? Is that not normal? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayya raji'un. Wallahi, that's not normal. Wallahi, that's not normal. Then, لَمْ تَظْهَرِ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي قَوْمٍ Zina does not spread amongst the people. And they go out and they do out in the open. إِلَّا فَشَا فِيهِمُ الطَّاعُونَ وَالْأَوْجَاعُ Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, is going to bring plagues. 
Plagues are going to come. We're going to see viruses from right, left, center. Well, Oja, Allah is going to bring poverty. Continents are going to suffer. Countries are not going to have anything to eat. And they're going to hear about all, all of this that's coming. Illnesses that didn't exist. Who knew about AIDS before? Who knew about HIV? But when human beings wouldn't stop committing zina, Allah brought illnesses for them. Illnesses, one after the other. Sexual transmitted disease, STD, gynorrhea, HIV, AIDS, all of it. Humans, instead of stopping the zina, what do they say? No, let's take condom. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi. Is that how Allah says, Wala qad bil adabi. Allah says, we brought punishes, punishment for them. For, uh, to يعني, make them repent. They don't humble themselves for Allah. They don't adhere. They try to find another loophole. They try to say, okay, this okay, you know, STD, sexual transmitted disease. So what you can do is have condom. No, what you need to do is stop. Don't commit it. Stay away from it. It's a fahisha. So this is what the hadith mentions. The second is The people are not unjust in buying and selling. So you go to the market today, you want to buy something, you say to the guy, how much is this? He'll say to you, this is how much it costs. You say, is this original? He'll say, yeah, wallahi, war of bil kaab it's original. It's... You take it, you go home, it broke. You go back to him, you say, look, brother, the thing I brought from you, and you said it's original. Here it is, I brought it from you, and this is the problem. Yeah, I don't know. Are you sure you brought it from me? Yes, I brought it from you. No, 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 I told you the beginning wasn't original. Yeah. You want to buy your products like that? Buying and selling, trading and businesses. When the people do that and they start to make that their means and their ways to make money, hooks or crooks, it doesn't matter. I need to make money for my children. What is Allah going to bring? Allah is going to bring years of drought. Allah is going to bring them years of hard. Allah is going to bring oppressive leaders. Leaders who are going to blush them. Leaders that are going to take their rights from them and strip them from what they want. Leaders that are going to cause them hardship and problems. There is not a people who refuse to give zakat. I say, I'm not going to give zakat. The people say, I'm not going to pay my zakat. You have to pay zakat from your money, right? They say, no, nah, I'm not going to pay it. Uh, you know, uh, I, 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 I spoke to my sheikh and my sheikh said, I don't need to pay. Qila wa qal, get out. The hadith says, وَلَمْ يَمْنَعُوا زَكَاتَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ There is not a people who refuse to pay the zakat. إِلَّا مُنِعُوا الْقَطْرَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Allah is going to prevent the rain from coming down. But this, this little rain that comes down that you see every now and then, it's not for you brothers and sisters and myself. It's for the animals who haven't committed the crime. It's for the goats and it's for the sheep and it's for the lambs. Allah sends a little rain for them so they can live. Ah. They do not break the covenant of Allah, the promise that they made with Allah. The first covenant that they made with Allah is what? The first covenant that we made. Allah says, The first covenant that we took is that Allah, you are our Lord. You are the one who deserves to be worshipped. You are the one who we should. When they break that covenant with Allah that they made and the promise that they made with Allah, they break it. They start worshipping other than Allah Taala. They break the promise that they made with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by adhering and following his path Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Illa Sallallahu Alaihi Aduwan Allah will place over them an enemy. Min ghayrihim an enemy from other than them. What would he do? Fa'akhadhu ba'da ma fi aydihim He will take what's in their hands. Some of that which is in their hands. He will take their lands. He will take their money. He'll take their women. He will take their Islamic heritage, their manuscripts, their literature. All of it is taken from the Muslim land. Brothers, I, I encourage you, look at, read the tariq by Al-Jabarti when he talks about when the British and the French and all of them came. They came into the lands of the Muslims, the colony. 
Mahmoud Shakir mentions it in his Risalat of Tariq ila Thaqafatina, how they took the Muslim heritage. They took all of that and they put it in Berlin and Paris and London and uh, yani Princeton University. You find Islamic books in those museums. They took it from us. They took our lands, occupying our lands. They're taking our minerals, our gold, our oils are being taken by them. Why are they doing, how are they doing all of that? Because The promise that we made with Allah, that we're going to worship Him, and then we're not going to associate partners with Him, we're doing it. We have misguided individuals who are coming and telling the people, call on to other than Allah, it's only haram, no problem. They will take what's in their hands. وَلَمْ تَحْكُمْ أَئِمَّتُهُمْ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ And their scholars and their leaders do not stop ruling by what Allah sent down. And then they take and they accept man-made laws that are inherited from other foreign countries. The person says, what is our culture? You tell him, Allah and his messenger say, he says, but in our culture we don't do this. وَمَا The hadith mentions وَمَا لَمْ تَحْكُمْ أَئِمَّتُهُمْ Their leaders do not stop. The leaders can be the father. The leader can be the leader of the country. وَمَا لَمْ تَحْكُمْ أَئِمَّتُهُمْ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ They refuse to judge by what Allah has said down. The book of Allah. أَفَحُكْمَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ يَبُغُونَ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُوقِنُونَ أَمْ لَهُمْ شُرَكَاء شَرَعُوا لَهُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا لَمْ يَأْذَنْ بِهِ اللَّهِ why are they going to take other constitutions? Why would they take other laws? Allah will place between the people animosity and hate. That's why we're seeing people hating one another. People don't want to accept one another as brothers and sisters because the tahakum ila kitabillah coming back to the book of Allah as the judge has not, has not been done. Hakim and Mahkum. Allah says in the ayah, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ يَزْعُمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ يُرِيدُونَ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُوا إِلَى الطَّاغُوتِ وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا They turn away from the book of Allah. They turn away from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They go back to what? يَتَحَاكَمُونَ إِلَى الطَّاغُوتِ They go to the Taagut, man-made laws, and they make that their laws. Once they do that, for what will happen? إِلَّا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ بَأْسَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ Allah will place between them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, animosity and hate. Ibn Majah narrated this hadith. Shaykh al-Albani authenticated in his Sahih al-Jami'ah. May Allah tabarak wa ta'ala Make us those people who follow and adhere to the book of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala qalban wa qaliban. I'm going to stop there inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdi. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.